Oh man, if you thought we were gonna stop graphing at sine and cosine, you were you were absolutely incorrect. We got tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant functions to graph. <laughs> I'm pumped. We're going to start with tangent, and what we're going to use is the unit circle to think about um, this tangent graph and relate it to that to see what's going on here. Because oftentimes we just like, we know what numbers to plug in and how to shift things around, move them up and down, and stretch them and all that stuff, but we don't really think about like where it came from and connect it to other parts of trigonometry. So let's do that. Um, all right. So first off, I know that my ordered pairs here are cosine of theta comma sine of theta. And I know that tangent, as a review of our unit circle, is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta, right? It's our y over x. While we often refer to tangent as slope, changing y over changing x, y over x, sine over cosine, awesome, wonderful. All right, well, let's see here. I'm thinking my quadrantals are gonna be some important points. You know, it just that seems logical. Um, so let's let's see what happens um, at each quadrantal, shall we? So I've got x, and y. Now at zero degrees, um, let's see, that's going to be y over x, so zero over one is zero. Then at pi over two, at pi over two I have um, y over x would be one over zero. That's that's undefined. I can't divide by zero. And then at, uh, at pi, at pi I've got zero over negative one. Again, that's going to be zero. And then at three pi, over two, I'm gonna have negative one over zero. Again, I can't divide by zero, so it's undefined. And then I'm gonna have, back at two pi, I'm gonna be at, I'm just gonna be at zero again, right? Because that's the same as zero. So I've got this pattern going on of zero, undefined, zero, undefined, zero. Well, what happens when it's undefined, right? That's either gonna be like a whole or, or an asymptote if we think about like rationals. This, it's gonna be it's gonna be an asymptote here because we're dividing by by zero there. Nothing's canceling out like in, in rationals where we get a whole. This is gonna be an asymptote. So how about I graph a couple of uh, asymptotes here? Um, we're gonna go at uh, pi over two, as I said. Lovely, lovely. So let me change the color here. I'm gonna go with uh, how about a light green for my asymptote. So we've got an asymptote there. And then I've got another asymptote at negative pi over two. Oop, not negative pi, we said three pi over two. Okay. But if I did go, um, think about like a negative rotation, that would put me at three pi over two, right? So at if I go a negative rotation of uh, pi over two, negative pi over two, that's equivalent, that's a, that's a coterminal angle to three pi over two, so it should behave the same. So I would have an asymptote there. I was just jumping ahead. I see the future sometimes. And then again, this is gonna be a coterminal to that. So I can put an asymptote there, and as what we see is this pattern's repeating itself. It is a periodic function, right? It's going to periodically repeat itself, right? Okay, awesome, fantastic. So I got these asymptotes. So clearly there's something going on between them. How about I pick some values? I'm gonna focus on that, that center area, this one right here. Um, to pick some values, right? Those are some nice teacher brackets, weren't they? Okay, so now let's get some in between. Um, and I'll go with, uh, you know what, I'm not gonna do blue. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to, uh, I'm gonna go with, let me go with a lighter blue. No, nah, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with purple again. I'm just gonna go back to it. All right, so if I'm staying between pi over two and negative pi over two, I'm looking at this portion of the unit circle, right? Negative pi over two is that, angle of rotation down to a positive three pi over two. Um, okay, so what would be some convenient values? Well, if you look at the blue ones there, um, uh, if I'm gonna be dividing, this is gonna be inconvenient, but hey, look at the red one here, the one that's a pi over four. Those are the same, so anything divided by itself is just one, right? So at pi over four, which conveniently is right here, And if this is one, two, three, well, pi over four comma one, and then if we look at our negative pi over four rotation, which is this one right here, that's gonna be a, um, a negative divided by a positive, so that's gonna be negative one, which would be right here, negative one, negative two, so on and so forth. Okay, and at, um, and at zero, we did say it was gonna be zero according to my ordered pairs. And if we were to continue to plug in values closer and closer, um, what we would see is that it's gonna be um, behaving in a way that it's gonna be going towards positive infinity over here and negative infinity 
over here to make this kind of S shape. It kind of reminds you of almost like a cubic function in a way. It's not, but it kind of has that, that somewhat similar shape. Okay, so, well, if we, if we continue doing this, um, I know that pi, we already said it was zero, right? And then if I look at my, uh, after pi here, um, I'm gonna have a, uh, it's gonna go to positive right here, and when it's at three pi over four, it's gonna go um, negative, right? Because I have one negative, the other one I have two, pi, two negatives. So again, it's gonna have the same pattern right here and here, and it's gonna be doing this all day long, right? Uh, and in here, I'm gonna see uh, again, We're running out of room, but I'm going to see the same thing repeating itself over and over because, whoops, it is a periodic function. All right, so again, you, you've seen tangent, um, but you may have forgotten like how we actually build it, why it is the way it is, what, why it has those values, right? Why does it look like that? What, what's going on here? And it's easy to forget some of the general shapes. So whenever I'm at a loss, I often just start plugging in points and think about that. I'm like, hey, like, well, why don't I just plug in some points? Okay, if I if I don't know what the heck's going on, at least I can plug some in, see if I can evaluate it, and get a general picture going, right? We don't have to memorize what every single graph looks like. Um, the more we use them, we just kind of remember them, but you don't have to memorize everything. So speaking of our periodic functions, perhaps we should uh, figure out what the period is. Now with sine and cosine, our period was two pi. That's how often it repeated itself. But as we see here, this is happening more frequent. In fact, it's happening over from negative pi over two to pi over two. That's just pi. Okay. Um, and now my domain, my domain is actually different here. So what we have to restrict some values in this case, whereas like in sine and cosine, it just, it just kept going, right? But here we got these asymptotes that we have to exclude. So if I'm going to write my domain, um, I need to think about, well, what can x not equal? Well, it can't equal negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, so on and so forth. But am I going to write everything out? No, there is a convenient way of going about that. Um, and I'm going to write it um, in set builder notation, x such that x cannot equal We'll start with how about pi over two, which is our first positive, pi over two plus, and how often is that happening, right? How often um, are we repeating ourselves? And that would be every, well, every pi, right? That's its period. So plus pi n or n pi, however you want to write it, but I'm going to write it with pi n. There we go. Okay, so starting at pi over two, um, and then I'm adding pi each time, and if n is what is a negative, then I'm subtracting pi, so I am still taking care of the other side of the graph, right? Awesome, fantastic, wonderful. Now my range, my range are my y values. Does it ever stop going up and down? No, it doesn't. So in this case, this is all real numbers. And I guess since we already did set builder, I'll continue in that same fashion, y equals all real numbers, or you could write it as, ooh, uh, negative infinity to infinity, right? Depends on, on what it's asking for. Cool, awesome, fantastic, wonderful. That's tangent. All right, now for cosecant. Cosecant is our reciprocal of sine, right? So this is equal to one over sine. So in my math brain here, um, I'm thinking maybe, maybe some of those those critical points, those, those wonderful, convenient, awesome values um, of sine could possibly be helpful, right? So what I'm gonna do is in a, in a lighter color, again, I'm, I'm gonna go with light green. Um, no, no, light, light blue, light blue this time. Let's change it up. I'm gonna graph my sine function, okay? So my sine function, um, and I should probably label the, uh, the y-axis there, all right, we're good. Um, so for my sine function, it starts at zero, zero, and then at pi over two, it's one, right? That's my first quadrensal, and then Back at pi, I'm at zero, and then over here, I'm at negative one, so on and so forth. Awesome sauce, let me go back the other way. Oops, skipped one, ah! I think I did that one other time too, my goodness. Can't be skipping. Okay, so we can see that sine curve, right? Um, now, let's think about what's going on here. So again, it's the reciprocal. So perhaps we can find some points where we're like, hey man, that doesn't make sense, okay? Um, or, or, or there's something weird going on there. How about at every spot where it equals zero, right? So zero is like zero over some number, zero over one, zero over two, or zero over some number, we'll call it n, right? Well, if I do the reciprocal of that, now it's n divided by zero. Can I divide by zero? No. What happens when I'm dividing by zero on a graph? We're gonna have asymptotes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop some asymptotes in everywhere it equals zero. 
All right, so now what I have are these, these asymptotes here, uh, because at the, if, it, if it's equal to zero and I do the reciprocal, it's undefined, so there's gonna be an asymptote. And now what's gonna happen here is if I were to plug in some numbers that were closer to those asymptotes, what I'd start to see is that I'd get this wonderful U-shape looking thing going on here in each one of these spots. If you uh, properly did that Desmos activity, you would have seen this as well. But there we go. We've got our wonderful cosecant graph. It's the reciprocal of sine. Now let's start talking about the period, okay? Well, for our period, how often does it repeat itself? We can see it happening in um, like making a cycle here, here, right? Um, so it has the same period, in fact, as our sine function, which is 2 pi. That's how often it repeats itself. The asymptotes come into play with the domain, right? So once again, we could say x such that x equals, um, we could just say zero plus, um, let's see here, n pi or pi n, right? Every pi, we have an asymptote. Um, x cannot equal, how about um, pi n? That way if I plug in, um, Zero, I get zero for my asymptote, um, so it can't equal zero. It can't equal pi when I plug in one. When I plug in two, I get two pi, right? There we go, awesome, fantastic. Last thing will be my range here. So for my range, um, let's think about what's happening here. And if I'm gonna you know, stay in our uh, set builder notation, um, I'm gonna have y such that um, y is, let's see here, less than or equal to negative one, and y is, we'll go with or, I'll just put a comma, y is greater than or equal to positive one. There we go, right? There's that little gap there. Cool, awesome, fantastic, wonderful. Um, you could also have written that as like negative infinity to negative one with a bracket on the negative one, right? Negative infinity to negative one, and then positive, or positive one to positive infinity. Lovely. All right, now on to secant. All right, I'm gonna go through this one a little quicker. We know that secant is our reciprocal of cosine. So it's one divided by cosine of x. And I'm gonna put those little ghost points as we often talk about them. So my points for cosine, I'm gonna pop those on the graph real quick. And boom, there we have them, right? We got that cosine wave going. And now, wherever it equals zero, that's where my asymptotes go, right? Because I can't do the reciprocal of that. It'd be one over zero, that's undefined. All right, so we have our asymptotes in place there. Speaking of reciprocal, has anyone made the reciprocal TikTok that I was talking about in the last? No, okay. Um, well, if you do, please send it. Um, all right, so same kind of idea here. We're gonna make those wonderful looking U's like we did before, but following those other points that are not on the asymptote. And boom, there we have it. Wonderful, beautiful secant graph. All righty, so period. Once again, it repeats itself every two pi, just like the cosine graph does. Now for my domain, again, I'll use set builder notation, x such that x is not equal. Well, let's pick one of the asymptotes. How about pi over two? Um, so pi over two, and how often do those asymptotes occur? They occur every pi. They're spaced out every pi. So plus pi n for some number, some integer n. There we go. And then my range. My range is the same thing as my uh, cosecant graph. And there we have it. Wonderful stuff. Last one, cotangent. All right, for this one, I did bring back our wonderful friend, Mr. Unit Circle. Let's start with our quadrangle, shall we? Sh shall we? All right. So for um, at one zero, well, now cotangent, hold up, hold, hold up. Cotangent of x is equal to then cosine of x divided by sine of x, right? Let's remember that, it's the reciprocal, there's the dance, reciprocal of tangent, right? So those are, those are flipped around. So now it's gonna be x divided by y. So one divided by zero, it's undefined here at zero. And then when it's zero divided by one, that's just zero, and then here it's gonna be undefined, and then here it's gonna be zero. So it's a slightly different looking, starting spot for our pattern, right? Well, let me pop some asymptotes in. 
So I went ahead and actually graphed a few more asymptotes than what we originally saw. We saw them at zero and pi, but I can go ahead and continue around and then at two pi, I'm gonna have an asymptote. And if I go negative, a negative pi and negative two pi, I'm gonna have those asymptotes as well. All right, cool. Well, now at uh, pi over two, we saw that it was zero. So I know that I'm gonna have the point of zero. I'm gonna go green now. It's gonna be zero here. And then at three pi over two, it was zero again. And I can also go that negative rotation there and there. Okay, so we're starting to think, hey man, this is kind of looking like tangent just shifted a bit. Well, let's think about this for a sec. At pi over four, which is right here, right? At pi over four, it's gonna be positive one. Boom. And I just scaled it a little bit there. And then at, uh, at 3 pi over 4, uh, if I look at that, I'm over right here. Well, it's a negative divided, divided by a positive, so that's going to be a negative 1. Because right, they're the same, right? Anything divided by itself is 1, but it's going to be negative in this case. So I've got the same kind of shape going on that I did before, but it's like reflected kind of, right? So same kind of tangent shape, just, just it looks reflected. Um, and, and we can repeat that in each, each little section there. Awesome sauce, there we go. Now let's go ahead and get our period. Well, our period, how often is it repeating itself? Well, zero to pi, pi to two pi. So every pi, just like tangent, it's gonna repeat itself every pi. How about my domain? Well, my domain, once again, it, it has an asymptote at zero, so x can't equal zero, and then also um, every pi, it's no, no bueno, right? So we can write it in its simplest way, would be x cannot equal uh, pi times some integer n, so that could be a positive integer, a negative. It could be zero, right? That would take care of that zero, x equals zero asymptote. Awesome. And then my range, well, my range is all real numbers. Y such that y equals, oops, not, not equals, all real numbers. Close the bracket. Boom, wonderful, nice. All four of them. So now we're gonna do a couple examples where uh, we got uh, some crazier stuff going on. Let's do it. All right, so we've got ourselves a cosecant. Oh, this is this one looks just terrible. Three cosecant of three pi over two x. Ugh. Well, first off, let's remember this. Cosecant is our reciprocal function of sine, right? So let's plot out those ghost values, some people call them whatever, of, of our sine function, right? So how about we find our period? Okay, so um, normally it'd be two pi, and I'm gonna do two pi divided by that guy right there, so two pi divided by three pi over two is the same as two pi divided by, or sorry, multiplied by uh, the reciprocal, right? Two over three pi. And if it helps, you can throw a one over there. So my pi's cancel, and I end up with, uh, we got four thirds. All right, four thirds. It's a terrible three. It's a little better. Now, how am I gonna like scale this out? Well, remember we got like four chunks of our sine function until it repeats. So let's divide four thirds by four, which would give me, um, would be the same as multiplying by one fourth, right? So I'm gonna get four over 12 then, if I divide this by four. And then I can simplify that down to one third. So each one of these are gonna be one third, two thirds, three thirds, which is one, and then four thirds. And look at that. I cut it into four chunks. Four thirds is my period. There we go, okay. And I can go back the other direction too if I'd like. Um, negative one third, um, negative two thirds, negative one and negative four thirds. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. Enough graphing, you know, two periods, right? So now it's time to put in my sine points, but actually first, you know what, I should probably scale this out. One, two, three. And negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, cool. So let's plot some of those points, shall we? Uh, for our sine function, I'll do that in light green. For our sine function, I start at zero, then I pop up, and I come back down to that midline. And then I'm down to the negative value, there we go, to negative three, and then I'm back up. And I can repeat that over here on this side as well. Cool, there's my, my sine. I could see that, you know, the sinusoidal function. But I'm gonna have some asymptotes, aren't I? Ooh, look at that, almost perfect spot. So at those zero spots, right, because the reciprocal of zero would be undefined, as we said, I'm gonna have an asymptote there. And then I'm gonna have an asymptote here. 
All right, there we go. We got our asymptotes, and then we know that it has that U shape where it's going to be going up and down based on where it's at. So I'll go dark green for that. So I'm going to have boom, boom. There we go. There we go. And wonderful. So I actually have two periods of this function right here, right? I've shown two periods. It's repeating itself twice. All right. Now my domain, my domain for this, so there was no shift or anything like that. So we know that it's um, x such that x cannot equal. Well, it starts at zero, so just, and then it repeats itself every, in this case, um, two thirds. And if you had two thirds again, you get to four thirds, right? So uh, two over three n would be my domain for this one, can't equal that. Um, and I would be able to get to each value there based on putting a negative one, negative two, a zero, two, so on and so forth, right? Um, and then my range, well, my range is going to be y such that y is less than or equal to negative three and y is greater than or equal to positive three. Not too bad, right? Not too terrible. So we find that period, we divided it by four to get our sections, and that helps us scale out the graph when we're dealing with a nasty um, period of a trigonometric function, right? Cool. That was fun. Now, some of you might be like, hey, like, what's the amplitude of this thing? It, the sine function has an amplitude of three, but our uh, reciprocals do not have an amplitude because it goes up to infinity and beyond, right? So there's no, no cap as to how high it goes, so it does not actually have an amplitude. Great question, kids. I'm glad you raised your hand and asked that. All right, it's time for some secant graphing. So that is our reciprocal of cosine. So we're going to think about this as a cosine function first, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll graph accordingly. All right, so first off, I do need to deal with that, um, that period there. Um, that period multiplier of 4, well, if I take 2 pi, I divide it by 4, that gives me uh, pi over 2, right? Um, so that's my period. Awesome, wonderful. Now I'm going to take that period and I'm going to cut it into four chunks to scale up my graph, right? So pi divided by, or pi over 2 divided by um, 4. Actually, I probably shouldn't write that there because it's not equal to 2 pi over 4. So pi over 2 divided by 4 is pi divided by 8. So my, I'm going to go by pi over 8. So pi divided by 8. Uh, and 2 pi divided by 8 is going to be pi divided by 4. And then I'll have 3 pi over 8, and then 4 pi over 8 is just pi divided by 2, and boom, I've made it through the period, right? Um, and I can go back the other way too. Cool. And now I um, I see some other stuff going on. I want to make sure that I scale that, um, that y-axis accordingly. I see that 5 out in front, so the amplitude of my cosine function would be 5, and I also have a vertical shift of 2, so that means I need to go high as high as probably 7 or a little bit more because I'm dealing with the secant function, which doesn't have an amplitude, remember, but the cosine does, which we're using to graph this. So I'm going to scale up to maybe how about like 8 or so. All right, so there we have it. I decided not to mark the negatives just because it gets a little bit messy sometimes. Okay. So let's go ahead and start graphing um, our cosine function. Now, one thing to mention, or our cosine points, um, one thing to, to think about is our midline is going to be at 2, right? So um, well, let's think about that as we're graphing. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this as a solid line for um, the purpose of erasing it. Because I don't want it to look like an asymptote either, right? Our, our dashed lines are our asymptotes. So I'm going to erase that at the end. It'll be easier to erase it that way. So there's my, um, my midline that I'm dealing with. Now for a, uh, <clears throat> for a cosine function, I'd be starting now five above, right? So five above would be at, um, at seven. And then I'd come back to my midline. And then I'd go five below it. So I'd be at three. And then I'd come back to my midline, and then I'd be above it, 5, so I'd be right up about here. And now I'm going to get the other part, too. All right, so we have our, uh, our points for a cosine function. Now we can use that to graph our secant, which is its reciprocal. I'm going to throw in some asymptotes where it's on the midline, right? If this wasn't shifted up uh, by 2, a vertical shift of 2, that would be on the x-axis. It would be equaling 0. We'd know, hey, that's undefined. Well, <clears throat> the same thing's going to occur here. Um, I've just shifted the graph up. Okay, um, so let's see. We got an asymptote here. I've got an asymptote here. And there we go. So I got all my asymptotes in place, and now I can go ahead and graph 
Um, and maybe I'll use a little different color just so it's a little more distinct. Um, I can graph my, uh, my, my secant function. So it's going to be heading up for the first part. It's a weird arrow. And then down. All right, there we go. So we actually have here, it looks like one, two and a half um, repeats here, periods that I've graphed here, right? Um, so we got, yeah, two and a half periods graphed of this, of this graph. And now uh, let's talk about our domain. Well, <clears throat> our domain, let's see, our, our asymptotes. That's what we got to look at, right? Because those are my excluded x values or my theta values here in this case. All right, we got to be careful with that. We're using theta this time. Um, I hope I didn't mess up the last one. We were using x. Okay, cool. Woo, got worried. Um, all right. So our domain is theta such that theta cannot equal, um, and it would be, uh, let's say pi over 8 would be our first value we'll use, pi divided by 8 plus, now how often are those occurring there? It's uh, 2 pi over 8 to get to 3 pi over 8, right? I have to add 2 pi over 8, so every pi over 4. So pi divided by 4n. There's my domain. Theta cannot equal that. Okay, I'll get an asymptote every time. My range, um, we can use y because it's y equals y such that y is less than and it was less than or equal to negative 3. I am including those values. And then greater than or equal to and it was 7 is where we started. Again, not terrible if you break it down by its reciprocal function, plot some of those points. And then what I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and Take away, there it is. Take away that midline. Lovely, lovely. Got my nice asymptotes there. Good stuff. Nice, clean, precise graph. Sort of precise? All right. Let's keep going. All righty. So we got another tangent graph. This time, though, we have a period multiplier in there that we have to deal with. So let's think about what's our period of tangent. Normally, it would be pi. So I would do pi divided by pi. Give me a little squiggle there over 4, so it's the same as pi um, multiplied by 4 over pi. Feel free to throw that over a 1 if it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. So the pi is canceled, I'm left with 4. Okay, so my period is 4, and you know, that's actually real nice, because if I divide that by 4, um, I'm going to end up getting 1, 2, a 3, a 4. So on and so forth, right? Nice and easy scaling on this one. How wonderful, how fantastic. I don't know how to count them. We'll just put into four there. Cool. All righty. So we've got our graph scaled out, right? Um, I think now it's time to actually, yeah, graph this. And if you forgot like the general pattern of tangent, um, that, that pattern is usually where it's like, we start at that origin there and you go, two of our um, scalings out and there's where that's where your asymptotes are but sometimes it's easy for that to slip your mind but let's think about it for a sec if i were to plug in one as i know this is one of my important points here i get pi over four and i know at pi over four tangent is equal to a positive one so i'm going to throw a little scaling here Okay, and if I plugged in two i'd get pi over well two pi over four which is pi over two Ooh. Pi over 2, that's where tangent would be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. That's where my asymptote goes. All right, let's put an asymptote in. And I'll change colors for that asymptote. Okay, so it's starting to take shape. Now, um, what about the other direction there? As I'm thinking about my general behavior here. Well, if I plug in 0, tangent of 0 is 0, and if I plugged in negative 1, I'd get negative pi over 4, which I know my unit circle would give me a negative 1 value, so that would be right here. And then again, at uh, negative 2, I'm going to have an asymptote. All right. Well, I can clearly see what's going on here with my tangent function based on what I know and the few points that I, I plotted here, there's one period of my tangent function, um, and if we'd like, we could do a little bit more here. All right, I did one more. We got two periods of our tangent function. That looks pretty dope. I'm going to leave it at that. No more time needed to be taken there. So what's my domain here? My domain. Um, well, uh, I have an asymptote at 2, so let's go with, um, and we're dealing with theta, such that theta cannot equal um, 2 plus, how often does it repeat itself there? Um, I've got 3, 4, 5, 6 is where we, so every 4, um, so plus 4 
n, right? And that is my period, so that makes sense. Um, and then my range, um, I'm going, you know, all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, but since we're in set builder for the first one, I'll, I'll continue in that. Cool. I feel like my teacher brackets haven't been that great on this uh, on the Surface Pro here. It's, a, it's a, an angled screen. It's a little tough sometimes. All right. All right, for this next one, just to save time here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it all out. Um, feel free to pause the video at this time, try graphing it on your own, dealing with that amplitude here, um, and then, or well, that leading coefficient, it's actually not an amplitude with our tangent function, because uh, it goes on forever. Um, and then also that period change, and then hit play when you're ready to see it all worked out. And there we have it. Bingo, bango. Um, so one thing you'll notice is that now instead of at one, that Second point is at two. That's what the two out in front of the tangent did. Again, no amplitude here because it goes to infinity and to negative infinity, so it's not like there's a high and a low point. Um, so we can't get an amplitude there. Um, not that it's asking for it, but I do like to point that out. Um, over here, we got our scale when I divided the period by four to uh, mark it out. I went with like a pattern method, um, but if you need to plug in values, you can. Uh, but you'll, I think, with some practice, you're going to kind of get into that pattern mode of the behavior of a tangent function and the other ones as well. All right, we're going to do one more example in the same fashion so feel free to pause the video um, and try this one on your own I'll graph maybe like one or two periods here and I'll put the work on the side as well and then when you're ready hit play and you'll see it all up there all right and there we have it folks <clears throat> our wonderful secant function which is the reciprocal of cosine right so I use my cosine graph but notice that negative 4 out there that was important I had to start down at negative 4 instead of up at positive 4 here and then I went through my cosine progression if you will um, over here we got how I got the uh, the period and how I got the scale um, and uh, yeah there we go I think we're all good here um, Awesome. Wonderful. Fantastic. Feel free to pause it to take a closer look at it as I move on here just to save some video length. Um, down here, we've got all of our, our parent functions for our um, reciprocals as well as tangent. So feel free to screenshot if you're uh, that type of person or pause it, jot them all down in your notebook. Um, but that that's all, folks. That's all. All right. America, Freedom, Rock and Roll, Costco, Riverdog, Jay on the Gram. Have a wonderful day.